that it wasn't so much trying to find a place to stay or, or have food to eat. It was like, you know, some of these course miracles potlucks and they load you up with food. You have to kindly say, no thank you, <laughs> I haven't had enough. So that's been the experience for me. And that was back in 1991, so I can really relate to Robin and her husband and children right now because you're right in, on the cusp of this glorious ride where people get sent to you and you get to shine your light and and you really have to trust that everything that comes to you is coming from your higher power or from the Holy Spirit. Whenever you start to get into guilt, it's always because you're back into the personal perspective of, okay, I've got to do something, or uh, looking to certain people, like looking to a board of directors or to uh, donors. And, you know, it's never going to get into that thing like uh, we're getting greeted and serenaded. <laughs> the ones, <laughs> it's so beautiful. Yeah. It never gets into this thing of favoritism or... Um, you know, who donated what or how much. I mean, it's, I know Robin and her husband are experiencing the volunteerism of people just showing up. And there's so much joy that you actually lose track of, of what you're doing in terms of form. You, you start to get more into your purpose, which is just to shine the light. And when you shine the light, things just show up in miraculous ways. And in these last 13 years, I, if I wrote a book, it would... It would probably be bigger than the, the Bible and the Arantia book and the Course in Miracles combined, uh, all the miracle parables and experiences. But I like to just, uh, when I travel, I share bits and pieces of them here and there just because they're just stories of inspiration that when you let go of trying to control your life, God is there. So I feel extremely honored to be here, and everywhere I go, I just feel like I keep meeting myself over and over. And of course, the miracles is just one path that aims at what we might call self-realization, know thyself, enlightenment, uh, salvation, uh, oneness. I know, just like a, a child filled with joy, in the sense that I've reached the state of mind and the transformation that I actually don't have any problems anymore. I actually don't have any uh, financial problems or health problems. I have no relationship problems. Uh, I was talking in a group uh, yesterday for about four hours, and uh, they know me from my videos and, and stuff to work on the web. But in the state of enlightenment or self-realization, you see that everybody is there with you. It's not uh, somebody being enlightened and everybody else not being enlightened. Kind of like the old, I've got it, but you don't. What you do in this state is you see everybody with such love and, and honor and respect. Because you're looking through the filter of your own mind, and when you remove all those obstacles and grievances, everything is beautiful. Everyone's beautiful. And in fact, when I go to other countries, uh, I was, when I was in Argentina, the, the bombs started falling on, uh, on Baghdad, and there were people protesting out on the streets, like anti-American protests, and, and banners flying everywhere, and, I was like a child walking around going, wow, look at all these people. And, and uh, I asked one of them, uh, what does that banner say? Because it was hung across the street. And it said, Senor Bush, take up knitting. <laughs> said, now that's a peace rally. <laughs> Forget the anti-war stuff. <laughs> Senor Bush, take up knitting. I said, I think I'm in the right country here. So I went to the gatherings and... Uh, you know, they're, they're all speaking Spanish and everything, and I don't know a word of it. It's like, see, senor. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know much Spanish, so they're asking me all these questions. And one of the questions was, um, they were really, some of them were really interested in the war, what my, my idea of the war was. And uh, so they translated one of the questions in Spanish to me. Uh, they said, what is your position on your president? What is your position on your president? And, and they gave me the... the Thing. It was like, uh, okay, what is my position? I, I, have, I have no position on, a, on my president. And then they came back to me and they said, uh, don't you understand the question? Uh, and I said, no, it's, it's not understandable. I said, we're all children of God. Uh, we're all spirits. And um, we, 
are children of a loving source, and, and this isn't political. Uh, God really isn't political. God doesn't see political boundaries or, uh, like the Native Americans say, you know, there's no, there's no dividing line between, you know, countries and states. It's just all shared. And uh, so I just basically said, uh, I have no position. And um, so then they all started to nod, and, and I learned the Spanish word claro, meaning clear. They're all nodding, claro, claro. And then I had to, I just broke out into a rendition of uh, John Lennon's uh, Imagine. Imagine there's no country, but wonder if you can, nothing you can, nothing to kill or die for, a brotherhood of man. And all these women, about 97% women, started singing with me, Imagine, on key, and in English. 